Hey Laura, so this is my response to your video on uh, cell detection within QPath. I hope other people will post responses as well, and it's not me, just me. Um, but in this case, because I'm, I guess I'm the one who wrote the parts of the software which caused the frustration, I thought it would be a good time to post a response and show five different ways in which you can handle the case where you've deleted an annotation, but you really want to delete the cells that were inside it. Okay. So to begin with, I've created a few different annotations. They are the ones that we see with the thick red outlines and then cells inside them. I have saved it, which means I can go to file, reload data at any point to get back to the state where I currently am. So the issue is if I double click on this, I can press backspace to delete. If I don't keep the descendant objects fantastic, that's what we wanted, the cells were gone as well. But if I press yes, which is actually the default object, or the default option, it will keep all of the cells inside. And yeah, as you saw, you can double click on each of them, select them individually, but there's over a thousand, so nobody's gonna to want to do that. So the easiest way to resolve this is to go with edit undo. So I have undo a couple of times, it's restored those. Undo again, and this has restored. Um, the other annotation backspace, don't keep them, then they're gone. So I do have to admit, QPath's undo is not very good. Um, the initial version of QPath didn't have any undo at all. Um, my thinking was that, well, firstly, <laughs> it's hard to write the software and there's so many different parts of it. Um, and I thought that adding undo support would be really hard to do and I would use a huge amount of memory because we're working with huge images. You could have a million cells. If you want to be able to undo, you have to create little snapshots along the way. It'll use up too much memory and it's not feasible. Later on, I became convinced that oh, actually we need some kind of undo because particularly if you're annotating images, no undo whatsoever is horribly awkward. Um, so you can have some level of undo within QPath, but if you go into the preferences and search for undo, it has this parameter of the undo hierarchy size, which basically that's the number of objects you can have in your image. If you have more objects than that, the undo will just shut off because yeah, it's going to be too hard on your computer to maintain it. You can adapt the parameter if you need to, but this basically is a way of controlling that you've got undo whenever you're doing lots of manual annotations, but you don't necessarily have undo if you're working with huge uh, regions. So yeah, wouldn't 100% count on QPath's undo. It also has slightly strange behavior. Sometimes you need to select it twice when you expect to only select it once. Um, so it's not great, but it is the easiest solution to the problem in the case where it works. So let's now consider the cases where it doesn't work. So the next easiest way to resolve this is to switch over to the hierarchy tab. That should give you a list of the objects here. We have the two annotations here on the right, um, and we have lots of cells. I can press Control A, select them all, but that will also select the annotations. Um, I can then deselect them with Control click on them, or else I can select here, scroll down to the bottom, hold on shift and click here. One way or another, if I get only these detected, then I can click the image, backspace, and delete only the cells as well. Actually, I should also consider the case that you showed in the video, which is you can go to objects, delete, delete all objects, but pay attention to the annotations here because everything will disappear if we do that. So delete all objects, we'll get rid of all of them. Um, let's say we reload the data and we go to objects. If you want to selectively delete, hang on, I should get rid of this. If we want to selectively delete only the cells, then they are example of detections within QPath. So if we delete all cells, then our remaining annotation should remain and just the cells should go. So that's a slightly probably in this case, if you want to keep the annotations that are there, but only get rid of the cells, delete all um, detections is a way to do that. So objects in QPath can have different types. So detections and annotations are both examples of objects and objects is like the general concept for, for all of them. Uh, annotations tend to be the ones that you draw manually or for representing large regions and detections are the things that you could usually detect automatically and there's, there's lots of them. Okay, so objects, delete, delete all these. Hierarchy tab for selecting, removing, or edit undo are our three options so far. So let's reload the data once again and consider a few more. Well, two more. So, actually, let's reload and I'll show you what I did there. Um, whenever I just originally have detected the cells within here, and if I look in the hierarchy tab, you can see that these cells are below the annotation that they were detected within. 
And so the hierarchy is basically QPath maintains a hierarchy of all the objects in the image. So each object knows about um, what the parent objects are or what the child objects are. And if you put all of those parent-child relationships, it becomes a sort of a family tree. And that's what we see in here. And so if I delete this and if I keep the descendant objects, it has that kind of family tree idea, then our outer annotation is gone and then all of these cells are then um, sort of detached from that. Their only parent is the entire image. They don't really exist on their own or they don't really exist within an annotation anymore. So I can draw an annotation around them again, but QPath won't automatically determine that these cells should be child's, uh, children of the annotation that I drew. So if I delete this annotation, it just goes completely without giving the, the chance to, to choose whether or not to delete the cells. But what you can do is you can go to Objects, Annotations, Resolve Hierarchy, and that will then figure out that these cells are inside this annotation and it will set these kind of hierarchy relationships, which is reflected within this tab. So now if I press Backspace, and if I don't click the descendant objects, they've gone. So the hierarchy tab is kind of key to understanding the details of what's going on here. You can often ignore it, but understanding a bit about how it works is very useful whenever you get into these tricky situations. One thing that I should also point out is that you might not necessarily see your detections in here because you can have millions of them, they can sometimes get in the way. So there is an option to hide them or you can view them without icons or with icons. And so if you find that you aren't able to um, identify them in here, then pay attention to whether, just right click on here and pay attention to is hide detection selected or which view is selected. Uh, okay. So then the last thing is, let's suppose that we have them here and let's suppose that we don't have to mess about with hierarchy. If we could select all of these quickly, then we can delete them. Um, one way to do it is through this list. But another way to do it is let's turn on this S button. So this is the selection tool. And this will basically change all of our drawing tools to instead of creating new annotations, they will select whatever is inside them. So if I draw a rectangle around the outside with selection mode turned on, I can click on the image to make sure it's active, backspace, and delete the objects there. And so I have to remember to turn off selection mode at the end so that I can then start to draw annotations again. So we have, there are five different ways. Um, we have the uh, objects delete uh, options here. Um, we have the edit undo, which sometimes works and it's the easiest one it does. We have the hierarchy where you can select things and remove them. We have the ability to draw new annotations, resolve the hierarchy, and then you've got them in here um, as well to work with. Or we have selection mode as a quick way to select objects based upon drawing and then get rid of them that way. Okay. So it's just another couple of little things that I want to show briefly on the video. Um, you aren't actually able to create a measurement table currently within QPath of only the cells within a certain region. Um, actually, whenever you create this detection results table, it's all of your cells. So in order to be able to see that, let's select these regions. And I want to run cell detection in here again. I actually want to run it with exactly the same process as I did before. So let's click on the workflow tab and I can actually find positive cell detection, I will launch it, and that will give me the same parameters. That's another little trick that's handy to know. So now I have cells across all of these, and if I go, let's say I select this, and if I go to show detection measurements, actually, I have all of them. It's not just the ones within the region that's selected. I get all of them at the same time. Um, what's not very helpful is if I wanna see which one they belong to, I can check the, the parent, it hasn't tell, told me very much, but if I select the annotation and press enter to edit its properties, I can say, I can give it some more useful name. And now you can see that we have this column, which I can sort by, oops, if I go to the right part. So now I can identify what things are connected to. So I have to then set names. Um, so let's say I press enter, which was the little shortcut for doing it, but I can go to annotation and set properties as well. Um, I can set names to all of these annotations and set properties. And that is how I can determine what everything is inside. But I do end up with all of the detections um, all within the same measurement table. Uh, you can also then see the names reflected within this hierarchy tab, so it's handy to keep control of everything. 
Uh, the little images are kind of nice, but they can also make the rows quite big, so you can adjust the size, it might be useful to know, or you can even um, choose to hide them if you want. And you can filter out the columns that are uh, present, so let's say if I want only the nucleus things, oops. Yeah, so I can filter and view only certain columns in there. So there's lots of little tricks within here as well as the histograms that you discovered. Okay. Um, right. So then the one thing that I also wanted to show them at the end was at the end of the video, you showed what happens whenever you unlock an annotation. So let's go back and reload our data. So here we have our object, we have our cells inside it, and we can edit this rectangle. We can edit this one, if I double click, I can adjust it. But at the point when we detected cells in here, QPath locked it and set this relationship. The cells are inside this annotation and it's no longer easy to edit it. Um, but let's suppose that we go off script and we unlock it. Relationship is still here, we can see it in the hierarchy tab, but let's then make it bigger. So this, for QPath's perspective, is like we remove the annotation, we put it back at a different size. So it hasn't resolved this relationship anymore. So we've basically broken the relationship between the original annotation and the cells that were inside it. That means if we press backspace, um, it doesn't ask us to delete them because there is no relationship. And you can see that in the hierarchy tab. So let's go to unlock and move this around. And so what you'd actually done then at the end of the video is that you'd run cell detection in here. And what I want to point out is that this can cause some subtle problems. So we have lots of the original cells. These are the original ones that we detected and we have the new ones in here within the region. So we have 100 uh, or 1810 new objects, but the measurements that we get basically shows you everything which is specially resolved within this rectangle so we have a much larger number of detections because we have about a thousand which existed beforehand. And if we zoom in, we double click, we can see that there is um, some duplication of cells within here. We don't get this outside because we just have the one object, um, but where there was originally cells, we get them. And so that could end up causing some double counting, which would be problematic. We can go in here, we can select the cells and we can remove them, um, or we can remove the annotation that we had before. Uh, let's not keep the ones I have. We can see the original ones are in there. So that only happened because of unlocking, editing, and then detecting again. So those slightly non-standard steps, yeah, can cause confusion. Um, so hopefully what QPath will do is the sensible thing that you expect it to do most of the time. Um, but if you do start like unlocking and editing, just be aware that these things could happen. You really need to keep on track of things in the hierarchy tab uh, and just make sure that things don't go wrong. So most of the time you shouldn't have to worry about this, but be aware that the QPath tries to do the right thing by default. Most of the time, if you do things in a standard way, but when you go non-standard, then um, QPath also tries to be flexible, so it can allow you to do things which might be very useful, or it could also be problematic. Um, incidentally, little padlock is showing that we have uh, the annotation is locked. Whenever I unlock it, little padlock disappears. So the hierarchy tab is really useful to keep on track of what is going on. Uh, the last thing that I then want to say about that um, consistent with the thought that QPath will try and do something sensible most of the time is if we have this hierarchy relationship, I haven't unlocked it, I haven't edited, I run cell detection again, QPath will delete everything inside and then create the new cell. So there's no double counting here. So most of the time you shouldn't have to worry about this, um, but just be aware that the whole unlocking editing can lead to new confusions. Okay, I hope that was in some way helpful, uh, more useful than confusing. And yeah, uh, also you don't need to know all of the details, but the deeper you get into it, I guess, knowing that there's different ways to do things, um, there is some extra flexibility in there uh, when required could be useful. So good luck for the rest of your QPath journey and uh, look forward to the next videos.